In this video, I'm going to share with you a very simple way where you can burn more fat, preserve lean muscle, have beautiful hair and skin, and reduce any kind of inflammation that your body could be going through. And that's just by changing the frequency of when you eat your meals. And that's called intermittent fasting. Now, there are different ways to approach a fast. And in this video, I'm going to explain the different kind of fastings, the benefit that you get out of fasting, and what happens to our body when we fast. Now, what is fasting? It's basically, you're going to be eating the meals that you usually do within a certain time block. So it's not about eating less, it's about eating your meals within a certain time. So say for an example, a great way to do it is you're gonna be fasting for 16 hours, so your eating window will be eight hours. Now, when you do intermittent fasting, you can drink water, you can drink coffee, you can drink tea. So it's not like the kind of fasting Muslims do in Ramadan, but that's also another approach that we can do it, and I will also explain the benefits out of that and differentiate the two of them, okay? But you can have water, you can have tea, you can have coffee, but you don't want to have too much coffee and tea because then it will spike your stress hormone called cortisol. And when you have too much of it, then that can affect insulin, which I don't want to go too much into and get away from the topic, but just so you have an idea. Okay? So now you're fasting 16 hours. Now, most of those hours you're going to be sleeping. So how would you approach it? You would have your last meal, say around 7 o'clock at night. It might be a bit early, but it's a great way to do it. Why? Because if you give yourself some time before you go to bed to digest the food, you get into a really good deep sleep. Because it's not like you ate and now your body's all working trying to digest that food and all that energy's going there. You want to be able to do the first steps and then when you're sleeping in bed, your body can really get into a nice deep sleep. It's not about sleeping 10 hours a day. It's about getting good quality sleep. You can get five, six hours and wake up with incredible energy when it's good quality, all right? So now you wake up. Instead of having your meal, you wait. And you wait for as long as you can until you work your way up to 14, up to 18 hours or even more. It depends on how you feel and what your specific goal is, but it will range between 14 hours to 18 hours to reap the best benefits. As a normal person who just wants to burn fat, preserve lean muscle, and get all the other benefits out of it, which I'm about to explain to you right now, okay? Now, if you want to increase it even more, you work out when you're in a fasted state. And that means now you fasted most of your hours. So when you woke up, you're at your last couple of hours, right? Now you work out because growth hormone is high. And growth hormone is that hormone that helps you preserve lean muscle, and burns all that fat and gets your skin glowing and all that. So when you work out, when it's high, you reap the best benefits out of it. It's like a double whammy. And then you break your fast. Now what, are the, what else happens in our body when we're in a fasted state? So now you don't eat for a long period of time, okay? Because we have either a fed state, a fasted state, yeah? Usually we're always eating meals and having snacks throughout our day. So we're always in a fed state. So you're never allowing your body to use that energy to focus on everything else in your body. If you're always eating, your body's always focusing on digesting that food. But now you're not eating for 16 hours, all that energy goes to all of your different organs and cells. If there's any inflammation, anything that your body needs healing, that's when it goes to it and uses all that energy to rejuvenate your body from inside. It goes to the different cells, okay? It breaks apart the cells and it takes away all the old damaged part of the cell. It throws it away and it rebuilds the cell. Especially when you fast in Ramadan and you don't drink anything. And you just completely fast, no water, no tea, no coffee. Because now your body wants to be able to adapt to what's happening and it wants to hydrate your body. So it goes to the fat cells, it breaks it down to be able to take water from it. So now you burn fat even more. So your body is very intelligent. It will always try to adapt to whatever your body is going through, okay? And now a lot of people, they think, no, but we have to eat four meals a day and breakfast is the most important meal of the day. If you look back at our ancestors, no one had refrigerators. When did they start promoting the most important meal of the day as breakfast? When they started creating cereals and packaged foods that are addicting, that cause us to crave them and want them more because of all the preservatives, additives, sugars, and sodium that's in it? 
This is all commercializing and marketing for people so that they can make money. Back in the day, the ancestors, the men used to wake up and go hunting for hours and we'd be naturally in a fasted state while the woman would go gather, right? So it's natural for us to be living like this. Now you don't have to do this every single day. You could do it a couple of days out of the week and still reap the best benefits out of it because also you're teaching your body how to adapt to both lifestyles. So it's not always dependent on food every day. The more you eat throughout the day, you've created what's called a circadian rhythm in your body where now your body has adapted to this frequency and it expects it. So that's why when you fast in the beginning, it's a little tough the first couple of days because now your body's going through a different adaptation. But then after, your body adapts to it and understands this is the new way of eating and then you don't get hungry anymore. But also because of the effects that it has on many different hormones in our body. So if you're someone who's craving sweets and you're always hungry and you always want to eat, it will balance certain hormones like leptin and ghrelin. Ghrelin is what tells your body you're hungry. Leptin is what tells your body when it's full. Sometimes these hormones can get imbalanced. So when we fast, it's, it's balancing insulin, leptin, ghrelin, growth hormone is high, just to name a few. So it's, there's many benefits to out of it, okay? Now, when you're also in a fasted state for a long time, what happens? Your body produces something called ketones. Ketones now will tell your body to tap into your own fat for energy. Because the main source of energy for your body is what's called carbohydrates. Sugars, breads, pastas, vegetables, fruits, bread, rice, potato, quinoa, all these meals is your main source of energy. But now when you restrict your body from food for that many hours and you build those, produce those ketones, now your body says, you know what? There's some fat in that body. Let's take from the fat for energy. So it will go to that source for energy. Now, if you're a guy, you're probably watching this and thinking, hey, but my muscles, I don't want to lose muscle. A lot of people think when they fast that they're going to break down muscle tissue, which is not true. Because when you fast, growth hormone is very high. So growth hormone's role is to preserve muscle. So if you're eating healthy or getting the protein that you need and you're activating your muscles on top of that and growth hormone is high, you actually get much better results when you fast. If you're someone who's a big bodybuilder, then you wouldn't want to fast. Why? Because bodybuilders are trying to get bigger. So what they want to do is they want to be able to get as many meals as they can in the day so that they're feeding their body to put on size. But if you're someone who's just looking to get lean, see the abs, get rid of the stomach, preserve that muscle, be nice and shape, then this is a great, great way and a great lifestyle to do. And many people do this, and not only for the benefits of burning fat and gaining muscle, but also from the energy levels or trying to heal their body in general. You have so many doctors, they approach people that are suffering with cancer to heal their body. They have them fast. And people started taking that as a technique to incorporate in their lifestyle. People who have big projects and a lot of things to work on, they also fast. Instead of using that energy to digest food and focus on what they're going to eat throughout the day and all that, it takes a lot of energy. So they fast to preserve that energy to focus on their project. That's why when you fast and you do it correctly, you have incredible energy. Now, if you're someone who's thinking right now, but when I fast, I don't have energy. Correlation doesn't mean causation. So it doesn't mean because you're fasting that you don't have energy. It's the foods that you're eating the day before you fast that are affecting certain hormones that cause you to feel the way that you do. Now, if you're going to go to bed and you're going to eat bread and pasta and all these sugar sweets and dates and all that stuff, you're going to wake up and when your body's hungry, oh, it's going to be hungry and it's going to be craving those specific foods, causing your sugar levels to go down and feeling dra drained of energy and hungry. So it's not the fasting that got you feeling like that. It's the kind of foods that you're eating that's making your body react that way. So that's why it's important, especially for people who fast in Ramadan, how you break your fast, what you fast at night, is going to determine how you're going to feel the next day. Because when we eat, it takes hours for us to break down food depending on the foods that we eat, but it's sometimes till the next day till we break down that food for energy. So when you don't have energy, it's, it's because of the foods that you've been eating or not eating enough. Or it could also be that the, uh, um, you have very low blood pressure. But it's to pay attention to all of these factors and not say fasting is what's making me feel that way. Okay? Now, another point is, is that you don't want to fast within a fast. So you have some people, they eat breakfast and they don't eat all day long and then they eat late at night. 
Now, you don't want to fast within a fast because that will affect your thyroid, your metabolism. So you want to make sure your eating window is at least eight hours or less. You can even have one meal a day. And the one meal a day could be a two-hour window where you could have two meals and you break them in half. And it's not about eating less. It's just one meal a day. A lot of people do that, and it's called an OMAD diet. You have athletes that do it. You have so many people that do it to reap all the benefits out of it, especially one benefit that's called autophagy. Now, when you fast for a long period of time, you're activating something called AMPK pathway, and that will increase something called autophagy. And autophagy is what I mentioned about the cells. The cells start to remove anything that's damaged or old in that cell, and it removes it from the body and it rebuilds it. And that's why we get so healthy when we fast. That's why in Islam, it's one of the main things to do in Islam is to fast in Ramadan. is because of the way it rejuvenates all of our organs, uses that energy to heal anything that our body could be going through, rebuilding the cells in the body. So there's so many benefits out of it other than just burning fat, okay? And now, if you're someone that's dealing with depression or you take antidepressants, there's another benefit to this. Why? Because it stimulates something called a brain-derived neurotrophic factor, and it stimulates this. So when you're fasting, it boosts your mood, okay? Now you combine it with something, that, uh, something called turmeric. Turmeric is a spice. Now you can put it in your food, you could cook it in the soup, you could put it in water and drink it, you can make a latte out of it, you could take the supplement. Now this one, this turmeric, it stimulates the brain-derived neurotrophic factor, boosting your mood automatically. And it also makes you very relaxed. So the best time to take it is at night. But you wanna make sure when you take it that you mix it with black pepper. So it becomes what's called bioavailable. This means so that your body can absorb all of it out of it and utilize it, okay? And you can Google and go on YouTube and you can check out some recipes to do turmeric latte. A lot of people in organic stores now, they started to sell it and people, instead of drinking coffee and stuff, they drink a turmeric latte, okay? So now to do a recap. When you're in a fasted state, what happens? Insulin is lower. So now you're in a fat burning zone more in a fasted state, yeah? Growth hormone is high, you're preserving lean muscle, your skin, energy, fat burning, okay? You produce ketones that will allow your body to tap into your own fat for energy. You're teaching your body how to adapt to both lifestyles, okay? You're stimulating the brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which is gonna boost your mood, and also, it's been proven in tests, which you can research, that when you take turmeric, it has the same effect as an antidepressant like you're taking an opiate or something, has the same effect on the brain. Imagine that, how strong it is, okay? Another one, autophagy. Now you're removing all of the damaged proteins and stuff in the cell, and you're rebuilding your cells in your body, okay? So you're gaining all of that energy back. All of your organs are rejuvenating, and all that inflammation is reducing. And that belly is going away, which is what we want. <laughs> so when you fast in Ramadan and you don't drink any water, this is what's going to increase the autophagy and break down your fat cells to hydrate your body. Because now your body's dehydrated, it wants water, and your body's intelligent, and it will always try to adapt. So what does it do? It taps into that fat cell, and it pulls the water out of it to hydrate your body. Okay? So when you do this, you want to make sure that you do it gradually. Because you want your body to be able to adapt, and you don't start flipping out. So don't go, oh my God, I want to burn some fat tomorrow. I'm going to fast for 20 hours. Work your way into it. Let your body adapt to it. Do it a couple of days out of the week until you feel like this is something that you like and you can do it every day that you want. And you can vary between 14 hours to 18 hours. You know what I mean? Depending on how you feel, how many meals that you want that day, just make sure that all of your meals are whole food and you're not putting any junk in your body because then you know, you want to be able to reap all the benefits out of it. The whole point is to heal your body and balance those hormones out. And if you're going to feed it junk, then it's counterproductive. You got it now? All right, cool. Now, if you have any questions, just shoot me a message. Let me know what it is. And if you're in my private Facebook group, I will do a live stream and I'll go more in depth into the topic. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next video.